Well, joining us now uh, from Washington is Elisa D. Lewin, president of the Louis D. Brandeis Center for Human Rights Under Law and one of the lawyers for Avi Zinger. And Elisa, I'll st I'll let's specify, this is not a lawsuit against Avi Zinger, it's against Unilever, but it would certainly impact your client. So first of all, May, did you expect this kind of response from Ben & Jerry's uh, in, re in, in reaction to that deal with Avi Zinger? Look, it's, it was clear from the statements that were made last July that there was not, that both the parent company Unilever and the independent board were not in complete sync. But the bottom line is that what Unilever has done in terms of the agreement that it struck with Avi Zinger last week was the right thing to do. And they are going to forcefully defend that agreement in this case. And Avi Zinger welcomes that. Let me ask you something sort of on a point of law there. I guess there might be two approaches here. One is, I guess Ben & Jerry's could say that, that Unilever is, is just violating our contractual agreement with them, the autonomy that we had when we agreed to be bought out by them. But I guess the other is the action of boycott in Israel, whether that the court will consider the, the morality or even maybe the legality of, a, of, of Ben and Jerry's boycotting uh, parts of Israel, or at least the West Bank, the settlements in the West Bank. Well, that was the theory of the lawsuit that we brought on behalf of Avi Zinger a few months ago, which was that what Ben and Jerry's, the independent board was demanding was that Avi Zinger violate both Israeli and American law by discriminating against individuals, both Israelis and Palestinians who would live over the Green Line and under Israeli law and under American law, that's unlawful. He couldn't do that. And it's when he said, no, he can't do that, that then they announced that they would refuse to renew his license. You have to realize Avi's been doing this now for almost 35 years. He has been the manufacturer and distributor of Ben & Jerry's ice cream. He has personified the Ben & Jerry's social mission. He is um, that that embodiment of those values uh, in everything that he's done and all of the programs that he's worked on. And now what Unilever did to its credit is say, Avi, you absolutely have the ability and the right and should continue to sell, manufacture and sell the Ben and Jerry's ice cream throughout the area, throughout Israel, Judea, Samaria, to everyone, to Arabs, to Israelis, to Jews, to Muslims, to Christians, to Palestinians, to everyone. And that's what they enabled him to do. And you're right, that is one of the issues that could be coming up now in this in this case. Well, how, how confident are you that the U.S. courts would support Unilever here and not, for example, decide on sort of on a contractual technicality in favor of Ben and Jerry's? Unilever, as far as we're concerned, Unilever is in the right. Unilever is now arm in arm with Avi Singer. They're standing for what's, as I've said, is what's morally correct, what's socially just, and what is the principled path. And so I would hope that any court in the U.S. would recognize that and would agree with that. How important would that be as a legal precedent uh, in, in terms of the overall BDS struggle and saying perhaps uh, awarding other companies of the uh, legal consequences of, of uh, following the BDS line? Well, I think that this is this whole situation has been a warning to other companies that they should see that BDS doesn't pay. That BDS, quite frankly, is just a very negative, divisive rhetoric that doesn't actually support the people that it claims to want to help. Right? Avi Zinger has done more with his concrete actions, with his programs that he has developed and that he has supported that have brought Palestinian and Israeli students together that's really helped develop relationships and coexistence and cooperation, whereas BDS and, quite frankly, the, the independent board, they've done nothing but spew negative rhetoric. It's, it's Avi Zinger and his concrete action, not the BDS anti-normalization that will lead to, to peace, and that should be recognized internationally. And I think companies should recognize that, and they should realize that the way to go is to follow Unilever's model. All right. Well, certainly this will be uh, an interesting case, and it'll be closely followed, of course, there in the U.S. and, of course, here in Israel as well. And we'll have to see how it turns out. Aliza Lewin, president of the Louis D. Brandeis Center for Human Rights Under Law, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Thank you very much.